Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you guys some fun, free, creative ways that I've been experimenting with recently to learn a language. I wanted to go beyond the sort of, you know, cook a recipe in your target language or listen to lyrics in your target language because although I think those are really great options for learning a language, I know they don't work for everyone because they don't really work for me. So here are some other options that you can try to experiment with that are a little bit outside of the mainstream. I hope that these inspire you to continue experimenting and finding different ways that work personally for you to learn your target language. All right, first up, take your phone, go to your camera roll, and find a photo, find a memory, something that means something to you, and then describe it. So I think this is really fun because as a beginner, you can say, you know, green trees, or there are green trees going all the way up to advanced learners can say, you know, I wish I would have known how cold it was gonna be that day. I would have dressed better for the season. Crossing that finish line made me feel elated. So by having this personal memory where you're actually there, you can say, yeah, I mean, I was happy crossing the finish line, but you know exactly what form of happy you are. And so hopefully it'll push you to find that exact specific word that you're looking for. For beginners, finding basic words to describe your life is great. To find out the word for happy is great because this is an opportunity to really dig into those words and learn those words. So when we make language learning a little bit more personal, hopefully one, it's a little bit more fun, and two, you learn a little bit more about it and use words that are actually gonna apply to your life. So as much as you could describe, you know, a llama in a snow globe, which I actually don't know the word for snow globe in any of my languages, so Maybe you could also use screenshots on your phone, but by using these photos that are more personal to you, hopefully it does push you to find things that are really meaningful in your life and that you will be talking about in your language learning journey and know what a snow globe is called in your target languages. <laughs> so the second one is this extension called StudyLib. So the primary function of StudyLib is that every time you open up a new tab, it's gonna ask you some vocab questions. So it's usually about three different words and two questions each. So really this takes like less than a minute, but if you really have to get going with whatever you're doing, you can just go type in the URL of where you're trying to go. What I typically do is because I am somebody that completely forgets what I opened up a new tab for. I actually open up two different tabs. So I open up one tab, so let's see how it works. I open up one tab Buena. that'll ask you the vocab questions and then another one to get wherever I'm going so that I can still remember like what I'm trying to do while still kind of getting that little bit of Spanish infusion. So let's see how it works. So duelo. Duelo. Morning. I'm sorry these words are so depressing. I get my words usually from El Times, which is the Spanish version of New York Times. If you watched my Spanish study routine video, you'll have seen it there. If not, you can check it out up here. So it's been a heavy year. So that's why a lot of these words are a little heavy. So, so it'll come up and you'll say, I know, or I don't know. Upside. And then, so it gives you another kind of way to play with the words. Atada. So see, it's a really, it's very, very quick. So if sitting down to do 20 minutes of flashcards sounds like your personal hell, this might be a different option for you. Because obviously, as you can see, it's really, really quick. You can click out of it if you need to, but it is a little bit of that infusion of your target language every so often. So how do you get the words? You can add your own words by going to flashcards. And wow, I have 93. So you can go in and automatically add your own vocab cards. So the other fun thing you can do is whenever you're surfing the internet, wow, that sounds so antiquated surfing the internet. Whenever you're on the internet, you can go and let's see, what word do I want to remember? Written. So I'm going to highlight it and then I have so many extensions. <laughs> this is the actual button for study lib and it's going to automatically translate it into Spanish. And then all you do is you just add it to that flashcard deck and then you have it. So you can also do it reverse. You can say, okay, I don't know what this means. So I'm gonna highlight over it. And then you can say syncing, okay, add. So that's the second way that you can add flashcards. Actually, the third way that you can get flashcards is they already have some flashcards. But let's go to Spanish. So they have 1200 beginner Spanish sentences. And I love this because it's using sentences. So every time that you open up a new tab, you get a new sentence to do. So it's in context and it's really working on a lot more than just that word, right? So I actually really love this. So there are three ways to add flashcards. So StudyLib is a really great option for people that can't sit down for 20 minutes and do flashcards, but wanna be able to do it a little bit, you know, throughout their day. All right. So the next thing that I've been experimenting with is social media for language learning. I started my language learning Instagram back in September of 2020, and I have absolutely loved the creative freedom that it gives me. If one day I wanna post about introduction of myself in Tagalog, I can do it. And all of my English speaking friends aren't gonna be like, what are you talking about? If another day I just wanna practice some new Armenian words that I'm learning, 
I can do that too. And so I've felt this huge creative freedom in starting a social media channel for my language learning progress. It's also really, really helped me reflect on the process as I'm going so that I can document all of my small wins and all of my big wins and share it in a community that is also celebrating those same wins. And so we'll share it back with you. So my personal preference is to have two separate Instagrams, one for my personal life and one for my language learning. I know everyone is totally different, so definitely experiment what works well for you. If this scares the absolute crap out of you, you can also make one anonymously and just share your progress with yourself. I think that form of reflection is also really important and I have been so surprised how much it's helped me internalize where I've been, where I'm going, and you know, take a second to celebrate all the things that you've accomplished, no matter how small or how big or how kind of obscure seeming to your regular maybe English speaking friends. So I definitely recommend starting some sort of creative outlet for your language learning progress where you can share how to introduce yourself in your new target language or share, I figured out how to say coffee in these eight different languages and isn't that so cool? Another thing that I've seen some people do and I really love is using little graphics. I can put some of mine up um, on the side here, but using these little graphics to describe something that you're really excited about. For me, it allows me to spend a little bit more time with the words, a little bit more time with the concepts, but do it in a really creative and fun way that I can, you know, pick out, ooh, I like this color pink. Ooh, I like this font. It takes you out of this sort of like very strict way of language learning and lets you talk about different colors of pinks while making a whole graphic about sequence. And I think these are an absolutely amazing way to really hone in on some of those words that you're trying to engage with, but in a lot more of a creative way. So I think all of the social media is definitely an experiment because I know different people have different boundaries and preferences and ways that they wanna express themselves, especially on the internet. But I can say through my experience, through the reflection process, engaging with the language learning community and really getting to use some of your language learning skills in a different way outside of your textbooks has been so beneficial to my growth. Also, I'm gonna be honest, there's a little bit of the pressure there when you put something on the internet, you do kind of want it to be right. So I spend a little bit extra time making sure that what I'm putting out there is to the best of my ability. So rather than writing in a journal where you're kind of like, okay, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Just that little bit of pressure for me goes a long way. If it's too much for you, maybe make your Instagram account or YouTube account or whatever private. But again, totally up to you. And I really hope this lets you experiment with some of your creativity and reflection methods in your language learning progress. Another extension I really like is called Toucan. So what Toucan does is as you're going through the internet, it'll randomly change a few words here and there into your target language. I'll put up the list of languages that Toucan already offers and those that are coming soon. I can definitely tell over the course of the time that I've been using Toucan can at least that their range of not only the languages that they offer, but the ones that are coming soon has increased. So if you don't see your target language here, hopefully it'll be here in the near future. So what Toucan will do is you can see here, this word has been changed into Spanish. So you can listen to it. Fita. You can save it. And then if you know the word, you can press check. Like I already know this, I got this, I'm all good. There are different levels of how many words can be changed on the web page. So you have less, more, many, and then premium is, I'm assuming, a whole ton. I use the free version. You can also turn Toucan off, which is a really nice thing if you're doing something that you know you need to know 100% that it's in your native language, you can turn it off. At the bottom of the little extension thing that comes up, it also has today's goal. Honestly, I don't really use this because I don't read usually the whole pages of what I'm looking at, but if you're someone that definitely goes through and reads the whole page, this might be a really fun thing for you because it does count every word that it has translated on the page. And sometimes, you know, I don't get down to this portion of the page. So for me, I don't really count that, but if you read the whole page, this might be a fun thing for you to kind of look into. Number five, the Easy Languages YouTube series. I absolutely love this series. They have so many languages. They have Easy Spanish, Easy Dutch, Easy Tagalog. And what I really, really love about this series are so many things, really. The first reason I love them is because they interview people on the streets. In natural spoken language, there are so many idioms. There's so many colorful ways to say a certain thing. And to be frank, people start and stop a lot. They, you know, go off on a tangent. They start to talk about this and use really colloquial phrases. And so you get to hear all of that. Whereas, you know, you can watch a TV series and I absolutely love watching TV series, but they're scripted, right? So it's not 
the full the full expression of restarting every sentence and how we naturally talk. So the second reason is that they have subtitles for both English and the target language. So if you're starting to hear something and you're like, oh, how do you actually spell that? They have it right there for you. The first time, maybe you watch it in English. Second time is in, you know, Tagalog. And then you start to just hear if you can understand it in just Tagalog, but you have the subtitles there to kind of help you. So there's a lot of different ways that you can interact with these people, interviewing people on the streets. The third reason is because the content is so diverse. One of the Tagalog easy languages is walking up to people and asking them why they like K-dramas. And so you're always gonna have something new. You're always gonna have something interesting for you. You don't have to suffer through what's in my backpack if that's not something you wanna watch. You can watch somebody talk about the best food in Rome. You can listen to people talk about what their favorite thing about their country is and you know, see them get so excited about that. There's so many reasons why I love this series and you can make it as passive or as active as you want. So you could just sit back and listen to it and that's all fine and dandy. Or you could be taking notes on the transcript. And so you have this huge range of how to use all of these videos and all of these languages. And there's just so much content there. I'll link easy languages and all of the other things I talked about today down in the description box below. If you guys have any other creative ways that you're using to study, definitely let me know in the comments. I hope this has inspired you to continue experimenting, continue to look at different ways of how you can engage with your language in a really fun and creative way. I know everything is not going to be for everyone. Every tip is not going to work for every language learner. So I hope this has inspired you to experiment more with your language learning process and to have more fun with how you're learning. And in the end, to just fall in love more with the language that you're learning. So thank you guys so much for watching. Absolutely let me know whatever creative ways you guys are using to learn your language down in the comments below. And let me know anything else you want to see of my language learning journey and my progress. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.